some of the pictures. Thank you. Um, I forgot all about it, but yeah, thank, thank you. you. We'll just capture this for our next sprints that we do. Uh, we did do a Quantico, um, which at this time does not seem to be feasible. Uh, they're telling me that Quantico is not open to public till further notice, um, but uh, we did and we, we um, yeah, we had a chance to enjoy that too. And, and one of the years we had a very special private access to the Library of Congress and the vault uh, that one of the uh, directors that worked there was a, a good friend of us and was able to take the group behind the scenes uh, in Library of Congress and some very rare, uh, rare uh, materials for our group to see as well. Um, if we would click on the next thing, I think we have other um, kind of highlights of, of uh, pardon me. It's coming. Uh, some of the photo op, uh, again, this, this was, the, let's see, this was the Ambassador of Latvia and Embassy of Latvia is a very historical Smithsonian building. Uh, they used to be used for performances. It's uh, on Massachusetts Avenue and has a uh, mini uh, balcony in it. And again, being that it's Smithsonian institution, it has very uh, strict limitations, less uh, what can oh. be done or not, but it has kind of medievalish feel to it as you can see it as well. So um, if we can uh, sc scroll to the next opportunity. This ambassador is no longer there, the previous one. He now he runs president's office in Latvia. So if we go to the Baltics, we can see him in the president's office in, uh, in Latvia. And this was, I think some of you met uh, ambassador of state of Qatar um, that, had, that hosted at uh, his embassy um, and provided really fantastic overview of the regional conversation and uh, hosted uh, actually beautiful lunch. I think if we on the next photo, we can, uh, next slide really shows, um, uh, it went from uh, come over for coffee and it ended up being I'll host you for lunch. And when we arrived, you know, as you see, uh, not just the flowers, but actually the menu and place cards and it was, uh, uh, very well attended uh, by his staff, and of course, very timely discussions as well. So um, that was just uh, beautiful references of things that we have uh, done in the uh, past tour uh, in DC. Um, I think we have another slide that uh, again, kind of highlights things that we did. Uh, you might recall that uh, African American history, uh, the National Museum of uh, African American History was what it is, one of the newest and what is one of the largest uh, museums that opened in the last five years and at that time we had the exclusive passes that were very limited access to those as well. Um, uh, no surprise, you know, our, our work with various uh, think tanks uh, and thought leaders in DC from Council of Foreign Relations, uh, Center of New American Security, as the State Department, of course, the US Global Leadership and so many others uh, um, that we visited, but also we plan on visiting this time uh, around different uh, opportunities. Um, working very closely with some of our board members, uh, we had a chance to be again hosted at that time at uh, Conica Phillips with John DeVar, um, David Staples of State Department as well, and as we see Steve Cook also, uh, who's part of the CFR, uh, one of the speakers that uh, provided opportunity for a dialogue uh, for our uh, members. And not even not to forget, it's not in here, uh, some bright highlights again from our visit with Steve Cook at the Council on Foreign Relations, great partner for our organizations and always very, very timely discussions. Um, we had a chance to visit, actually go inside Department of Energy, which at the beginning did sound like a very exciting thing to do is go to Department of Energy. Um, but uh, our board member's uh, brother at that time was Under Secretary of Energy. And there, I think, were only three undersecretaries. So his uh, knowledge uh, really blew us away. And when we learned all the nifty things that DOE does, um, as we know from nuclear and other research, we were just completely blown away. And many of the members said that, that was the most surprising uh, briefing that we had, uh, which was again provided by DOE undersecretary. Um, no photos from inside allowed. Therefore, this is the one and only photo that really that we have uh, from DOE. Uh, in reference. Um, I mean, do we have any more photos? I don't recall on the, oh yeah. This was good fun. Uh, ABI, I think Mark, you might Mark, you might have been being to Quantico independently from the council too, haven't you? Yeah, I think when you were there probably too with the uh, Citizens Academy of FBI. 
Uh, I didn't do it at Academy. I just I had a chance to take the group uh, with us. But yeah, it was a very uh, in interesting, timely uh, opportunity to go uh, to see where the agents get trained. Uh, the picture on the right side is actually a mock-up town or actually made in, in Americana town that is built uh, for training purposes. So you see there's actually a store right next to is a bank. Then you have probably some sort of dining establishment. And I know behind it, I think it was a pharmacy, used car parking lot, actual real cars. And uh, again, for training purposes for agents to learn how to address any critical uh, situations, multiple points of entry, and all the strategies that are taught in there. Very memorable, definitely experience for us. Again, Quantico is currently not accepting any tours, but uh, we keep asking and I will we'll not give up till we see to the you know, last day if that is a chance for us to go back and uh, perhaps visit uh, as well. Amy, if we see what, oh yeah, I'll talk to that in a little bit, but uh, of course, uh, dining uh, opportunities that we had, uh, had a chance to host one of the meetings that we had was at Old Ebbet Grill. We strategically think through kind of the Washington DC dining um, uh, and uh, kind of enjoyable, timely, but again, the, um, the other kind of venues, and that is definitely in the works. Um, looking at some highlights of what we are planning, and these are actually discussions that we are holding um, at this time. Most of these things are in discussion, really just need a confirmation from uh, the aforementioned individuals that I reference, as well as the groups, they have uh, our their verbal commitment uh, to host us. Uh, this will be really, really exciting. Um, ambassador of uh, Indonesia to United States, and this is a view of the embassy. The embassy was built in early 1900s, kind of the grand Americana era. Um, and there's a, uh, of course, there's a whole family story how it was built and who for, and the people that lived there and hosted. Uh, and it is on the corner right of Massachusetts Avenue, very close to um, DuPont Circle. So the consulate here uh, is very supportive of our tour, and we will definitely be uh, in discussion with the embassy about their convenience is what that, uh, uh, what that visit uh, might look like. I'll ask Amy to click on the next for us. Uh, no surprise, uh, we have been um, uh, visiting Saudi Arabia now once a year. Uh, it's been a, a very uh, this. It has been a destination uh, that has been uh, very desired by our membership and friends of. Um, and given our close cooperation with the ambassador herself, Her Royal Highness, uh, as well as the representation in D.C. and uh, other contacts, uh, they have expressed interest in also welcoming our group into the embassy. Uh, ambassador would love to hear from the travelers that have been to the kingdom. Uh, she's very excited that uh, we've been there and experienced it ourselves. Uh, she's very passionate about groups like ours. So uh, they are, we're definitely on our uh, invitation list again to go and see the ambassador and have a, a dialogue with her uh, in DC. Just a very different look and feel of the embassy uh, than the previous one. And you might appreciate it, our tie in with the students. Uh, uh, we recently, students who won the Academic World Quest, our trivia night for the students, where a school here out in the woodlands, uh, I was a rather than Conroe, Caney Creek, uh, from very much a suburbia agricultural background uh, environment. And that's the school that uh, won the trivia. Uh, therefore, we send them to Washington, D.C. Uh, for all of the students, that was the first time being in Washington, D.C. Uh, for one of the students, actually, it was the first time being on the plane. And so it was a memorable experience for them. They went and they played national level. They did not win, but that's all right. But being there was a, for us, it was a winners that they have made it that far. Um, and the ambassador of uh, Saudi Arabia um, kindly invited them to the embassy. Obviously, first time for any of them being at the embassy at all. Uh, and then she, uh, it, it wasn't just a photo op. She spent over an hour just talking to our students and learning about them and giving her overall an overview of her role and importance of the bilateral relations and uh, her vision of this partnership and so forth. So for many of the students, that was a very, very uh, memorable time uh, to experience DC as well. Uh, so yeah, definitely this embassy is also uh, on um, conversation. Um, very unique uh, uh, 
different we're looking at different parts of the world so we don't necessarily tap into european network but we also look at uh, different global representations like from european embassies uh, to as you saw indonesia to, to the middle east as well um, but turkey has been a very interesting ally has been ally a lot of stories uh, in, you know from the current uh, leadership nevertheless we know that it is the leadership and the embassy represents the point of view of the government that is their job um, and uh, it is also their role to represent the bilateral understanding with the United States. I had a chance to host for a, a visit in Houston, uh, Ambassador, uh, Embassy DCM, which is the Deputy Chief of Mission, number two person. And um, he has welcomed also our delegation to one in uh, Washington, DC, uh, to pay a visit to the with ambassador. So we'll see if we have a beautiful residence as well. Maybe we're actually lucky to be hosted at his residence uh, uh, or the embassy. Again, very timely conversation, uh, interesting role that Turkey plays, East meets West, NATO meets other parts, energy sector, of course. Um, so I would anticipate that it would be a very unique and different conversation than some from the other allies that uh, European and so forth. Um, you'll ask me to. Uh, some of you, uh, again, the kind of the um, people in the news or those who follow the news, uh, inauguration is a very, very big day. And you probably all know that the, on the day of uh, inauguration, the incoming president uh, spends the night at the Blair House. Uh, so we will uh, we'll see if we can access the Blair House. Blair House image is the one in the bottom left, the one with the beautiful uh, curtains and the furniture. Um, and that is right across the White House. So we want to do a little bit of walking tour for us. Very slow, enjoyable picture moment. Uh, Blair House is on Pennsylvania, right across from the White House. So beautiful photo up from Blair House to the White House. Literally around the same block is the famous yellow church, the St. John's Church that you see in upper left. Uh, that is the one that president always goes before he, or eventually maybe she, uh, go on to Capitol to be you know, sworn in. Um, but that is the church that they go to, and it is in walking distance from the Blair House and the uh, White House. And right across from uh, this uh, beautiful church is the Hay Adams Hotel, um, and uh, what is also well known as sometimes the meeting place of the White House staff, uh, or those who cannot really access White House, but they meet uh, in um, Hay Adams' famous bar, which is the upper right corner, called Off the Record. Um, so my hope is that we do a little nice walk from Blair House to the White House to the church and perhaps end up um, for a glass of wine or cocktail at the off the record. All of those are um, very important DC landmarks and literally 10 minutes away, 10 minutes away from the White House. So we we'll, would like to incorporate this also uh, in our schedule and again, all the meaning that it, that it represents. You know, when we look at the inauguration next time, we can say that we've been there and we know exactly where it is and, you know, how it uh, looks like there. So that would be an addition to this opportunity too. Um, FBI, as I mentioned, Quantico is not uh, open for business uh, to visitors. Um, Amy, do you see you have an, yeah, thank you. Uh, but um, FBI headquarters are in DC. So I'm in touch also with the, actually the, the top individual here in Houston. Uh, there's a new individual assigned to lead the FBI offices in Houston um, with the opportunity to uh, have a visit to the headquarters and uh, have a briefing by uh, one of the agents. So um, if we are not able to pull through Quantico, we'll definitely be uh, have opportunity at the FBI headquarters, which is for us a little bit more convenient. We don't have to take the trip outside to see to Quantico. It's a little bit of a, uh, um, distance that we need to tackle. But definitely more to come on this as well. Um, Regina, I see you're trying to join us. Can, can you hear us and see us? Yes. Great, thank you. Uh, we had started the, already the, the discussion. Uh, we are capturing the recording, so uh, it will be on our website. Probably not this week, give us with the Memorial Day. We'll post it on, on our website so we can hear the first part of the dialogue as well. Uh, this That's is very good. Very interesting um, idea that we would like to also incorporate. Uh, it's called the Marine Barracks. Um, and these are the Marines that you see on the White House, part of the White House. They actually serve in the White House. 
uh, and the barracks is where they live, where they train, um, when they are stationed and positioned for the White House, this is their home away from home. And we have, I have never been there, the, the council has never been in these barracks to learn about the history, the importance, why are they there, what they do, how often, and so forth. So uh, that is also a new addition to a DC um, visit for us as well. Again, the US uh, Marine barracks that are located in Washington, DC. So when we look at the Marine One chopper landing, we're actually Marines. Uh, there's a whole meaning and obviously a lot of ritual and tradition that goes uh, into them being there. And of course, it's a huge honor for them to be asked to serve uh, in that capacity uh, at the White House. Um, I think that's a, oh yes, yeah, sorry. Uh, these are kind of the previously mentioned is more places that we go to. Um, and uh, again, we know that we have different meals that are part of our tour, lunchtime and uh, uh, dinners. So um, sometimes it's easier for also to invite these special guests that we have uh, and we have hosted, but they're also new ones. So uh, these are again, individuals that have expressed interest in just uh, scheduling. Uh, some of you might recall Robert Costa, um, yeah. uh, who was, again, he's a, current chief of uh, election and campaign at CBS. He wrote Peril, which just came out literally uh, as we were hosting him. And again, former chief political correspondent for the Washington Post. Um, but uh, we have his uh, outreach as well and uh, schedule permitting that is, uh, he was one of our dinner guests that we have uh, uh, in, in exploring the opportunity to be hosted again uh, while on tour. There are a few others. Uh, Peter Baker from New York Times. Um, we'll see if which you know which one we're able to facilitate. But another fantastic uh, speaker um, that would be entertained and have a direct access to and have a conversation with. Um, midterm elections will be actually happening at that week. We'll be in DC in the week uh, when it is actually happening. So again, very timely. Uh, Kurt Walker um, again, his former ambassadorship to NATO. And being that he was a special envoy to Ukraine, um, also said that uh, uh, he would be uh, interested in participating with us. Uh, if you recall, also he testified during the Trump time uh, on the Hill when there was a um, conversation about Trump's involvement in Ukraine and Kurt Wolfer was one of the individuals that actually testified. We had a chance to host him separately, uh, of course, while a little bit while afterwards. Um, and that time conversation on Ukraine and regional importance. And this was obviously before the war um, that has uh, taken place since then. Uh, but another uh, great connection that we have and a tentative um, guest for one of the uh, lunchtime or dinner opportunities for us as well. Uh, Georgetown University, I'm sure you will agree, is it is another institution of Washington, DC. School of Foreign Service definitely is uh, a place that generates uh, the new diplomats that the US uh, uh, trains. Uh, and again, great friend of the council. Uh, he is again, Dean of the School of Foreign Service. Uh, great stories to tell. Um, and again, the institution that he runs and the importance of it globally and the mind and the power that he attracts and what it generates and then the, the graduates, they go out and represent US diplomacy very well and are diplomats and um, definitely work mostly in part of the State Department and uh, other really uh, important uh, global organizations. So uh, Dean Hellman is one of the invited guests uh, for uh, and during the visit in uh, Washington, DC. I'll talk a little bit of logistics offsite again. Um, this is by no means what I mentioned is, you know, the final, uh, it will, some of it will be scheduling available. And there are so many other friends that we have had also that would like to be part of it. So um, as we get closer, of course, you'll hear more uh, on finalized agenda, uh, kind of before even starting summer, uh, not many wanted to really, or able to commit as far as, you know, fall with specific date and time. But uh, that's just a minor thing that Amy will tackle, I have no doubt will be ever being in position. 
Um, most of you, as I said, have are well traveled, um, but uh, I, we prepared this slide just to be ready for somebody who might not be a seasoned traveler. Some of you, again, the the three larger airports are. Uh, DCA, the national airport, Dallas a bit further, and then there's Baltimore. Um, we do have nonstop flights here from Houston and uh, United and provide and other uh, carriers. Um, preference for the ease of travel, always DCA, international airport is definitely much preferred uh, because it's so close to town and probably 10 minute uh, taxi ride and you'll be at the destination where Dallas airport is a little bit more involved uh, coming into town. Uh, as well as departing, you just need to plan a little bit more for a time. And Baltimore, Washington is another port in direction of uh, Baltimore. Uh, so going up north from DC uh, is even a little bit further than Dallas Airport. So my uh, suggestion and guidance would be the DCA, uh, but uh, Dallas is really not a bad second choice. Uh, again, available based on the flight and price uh, availability uh, as well. Um, we looked at some pricing, you know, example, what it, uh, we don't necessarily have a suggested flight, but we looked at the flights, what they are pricing out uh, literally as of today. If you were to leave on Sunday morning to join, to be there in time for the meet and greet on Sunday. Uh, and somehow I see we want to call it a Tuesday. Our Tuesday, Thursday is the Tuesday, but uh, leaving out on Thursday uh, that right currently the price is uh, about $470 uh, that we uh, saw. Of course, it might change if it's, you know, uh, other day, a different time or different airport. This is again, going into DC National uh, uh, Airport. So just wanted to give you kind of outlook what that uh, pricing um, could possibly look like as you start planning this uh, opportunity. Um, one thing we still haven't talked about is that I'm sure you, the pricing were the hotels. Uh, we are in conversation with the, a few hotels and I think it'd be easiest for all of us if that hotel pricing will be um, included. That way for logistically, we know where we're coming, where we're going from, and we can adjust uh, kind of the starting and the ending point for the day. Um, again, with the Memorial Day right upon us, we're slightly behind it, but stay tight and we'll definitely have a very timely update, you know, for you to uh, have that also included on um, uh, itinerary, and therefore it will dictate the, the pricing as well. But um, as you know, I love DC. I can go back there. I can just keep on talking about Washington DC. A lot of cultural opportunities, a lot of museums. So if you come early or stay late, um, definitely many museums. Uh, again, from cultural, timely, historical, futuristic. Um, aeronautics, uh, you name it, you know, it's, uh, it's definitely there. And of course, the current uh, ongoing exhibits also that are opening uh, for public uh, uh, as well. So it's a great city, a lot of walking, a lot of walking. Um, but that is the charm of, you know, Washington, D.C. is that uh, that is the uh, where these institutions are. I strongly believe it's a type A type of city. you got to be jump in and swim as quickly as you can, uh, type of personalities. And uh, I think it really, you get to see the best of the world uh, in this one big city. And I think again, um, not playing politics, but I'm saying it tends to attract uh, very forward thinking individuals from US. And of course, then you have the, uh, again, kind of US leadership, the capital and other institutions and then, of course, the World Bank. Again, you, your top world financial uh, minds come here for the World Bank. And then, of course, a big component is the embassies. And I say that uh, uh, to be posted at any or to be posted at embassy in Washington D.C. is not only a privilege, but it's one had to earn their position to be posted in Washington D.C. coming from any foreign post. So uh, you'll be really exposed to the top diplomats of those nations. Uh, for them to be uh, here in Washington, D.C. And uh, the cultural aspect, I think many of the nations, just as many states, they always want to show the best of the best in Washington. You know, how often do you see if you are the best choir in the state, you'll go to perform in D.C. If you are, you know, exhibit A and B, you'll be probably exhibited perhaps in a capital somewhere else in Washington, D.C. 
And that is very much the case for global artists, for global performers, you know, Kennedy Center and exhibits alike. If you perform somewhere well, you ultimately one destination to be featured is Washington DC. So you can walk around DC and literally be exposed best of the best within few block radius, uh, uh, mentally travel globally and uh, again, have a international conversations, international cuisine, international culture, um, and a lot of things in development and being really in the pulse of the world. Um, so that's, uh, I think that's, is pretty much the end of that, I think. I think. Yeah, we'll just zoom out from it. But uh, I, have most of you been to DC? Well, gosh, yes. Everybody. I live yes. there. I know, Nancy, we got that. And Alan, and I'm sure you've been. Regina, have you traveled? Have you been in DC before? Yes. Good, thank you. Again, just I never want to assume, you know, uh, that's what makes us uh, so, uh, so different. Anything that I can help you answer or any parts of, you know, DC that, yeah, go ahead. Uh, I, I noticed that um, on this trip, looks like there weren't any think tanks listed or anything with the Council of Foreign Relations or anything like that on this particular trip. No, no, it's a, uh, they are included. Uh, we're just waiting on confirmation on which day and which times. Um, CFR uh, is definitely there. Uh, uh, Brookings, we're in conversation to uh, at least three to four think tanks are part of the agenda of uh, uh, Richard Fontaine with his institution also is fully on board and uh, would like for you know us to join him and and a few others. Okay. Uh, also, uh, I know looks, you said you couldn't confirm a price. What uh, in the past, typically, what has it cost? I would probably anticipate it to be somewhere and this is very much a bulk or probably 1500 or so depending what we hear from pricing uh, a lot of things have changed price wise uh, as well as we include most of the meals um, and hotel prices are very fluctuating as well so uh, but I, I would anticipate 1500 or about okay and that would be hotel and meals and then any additional yeah. days we would we would pay for on our own that's correct yeah okay yeah yeah Any other thoughts? Sylvia, Mark, Alan. Alan, I think you're muted. I think you're trying to say something. Alan, yeah. I'm unmuted now. Can yeah. you hear me? Yes, we can. Yeah, one of the places that I was on one of your tours back, oh gosh, about eight years ago, nine years ago, was we went to lunch at the National Press Club. And I thought that was wonderful. We had uh, several journalists, plus we were able to meet a lot of the journalists who were happening just to, to lunch there. Uh, and that was a wonderful experience. Any chance that that could possibly be part of the, the trip? Very likely. That's why I said, you know, you might have the knowledge of suggestions that we might not even thought of. Uh, the last three years has been a little bit thrown out of whack for sure. us, uh, but uh, definitely a valuable suggestion. And uh, you see, we do work very closely with a lot of journalists, uh, media as well. I second uh, that. I really do. It would be wonderful. Good. Yeah, we, uh, met, we met, the one time we went there, we met David Sanger. And we had a really good discussion with David Sanger from the New York Times. And, and that was a fascinating uh, uh, experience. But like you mentioned, you had a lot of good journalistic contacts there. Yep. And... Uh, but if we could meet at the press club, that would be wonderful. Absolutely, there. If you know, there's a part of being there as the op one, but also meeting them. So a lot of efficiencies in that, and maybe you know Robert Costa, you know, might be a way, that's might be a logical way for that to take place too. So sure. I appreciate the great suggestion. Thank you, Alan. Yes, thank you, Alan. I've I've written that down. Yeah. Good. Go ahead, Raymond. Uh, yes. Now, are most of these activities during the day or are some of these like in, in the evening at, at night or will we have a chance to kind of wander out on our own in the evening or? Uh, well, it's a bit of a combination of both. Uh, um, our suggestion is probably that, you know, we'll start probably not at 7 a.m., but uh, it'll be a little bit more reasonable hour, uh, kind of wait out perhaps the rush hour so we don't necessarily need to be competing with everybody else going to work. Um, but we start with the 
maybe one or two briefings before lunchtime, then I have lunchtime uh, opportunity, a um, couple of things in the afternoon, uh, and then mention some of the dinner guests. Uh, uh, we'd like to have some dinners included. Uh, our goal is to have a kind of welcome kickoff event on Sunday and conclude the program uh, with the lunch on Thursday and I'm working in between the lunches probably would be part of the program because it's best way for us to, uh, as Alan just mentioned, the ENC right, get speakers like that during their workday. Um, but we definitely want to allocate at least one evening, uh, give you free dinner time to, you know, to be out and to do things in Washington, DC. Um, there's so many things to do and so many people to see and it's just short time to do it, you know? But yeah, definitely, we, we know that. Also, we know that uh, that kind of intensity one can only hold for certain days. You, you know, we, we want to make sure that you have a little time to regroup, if I may, uh, from that uh, as well. Is it transportation? Is like a bus? Like they put us all on a bus? And, and how many people typically attend? No, usually what has really worked best, and Alan, you can chime in what you did during your time too, but uh, um, we really, what we did in the last two visits, uh, we did use Uber. So we just get in groups of, you know, we call an Uber and uh, it was just an efficient, uh, with the bus, it's always the complication where's the bus and it can't, anyways, uh, it, it, it was quite easy. And uh, uh, all of us kind of grouped in little groups and, you know, um, co covered it that way. Alan, what did we do? What did you do when you were in DC? You also, I believe, used taxi. We just used uh, um, public transportation. I, yeah. We never had a big bus together or anything. Yeah. We would take cars or Uber or something yeah. like that, taxis. And uh, we stayed at the the Mayflower, so we were pretty close yeah. to everything, you know, in that region. And uh, a lot of walking. That's that's my fear. I don't walk much anymore i have problems as you noticed recently with walking so i'm just looking at the trip and it's one trip i would love to go to washington dc again and and that's a a, a trip that i would hope i could maybe make but we'll see what's going to happen in the next few months but but sure. we just we took we did a lot of uh when we went gosh i went on two trips to washington then i i uh, like Nancy, I had lived there. I had worked for a United States Senator for a year and a half. And um, I won't say how long ago, but anyway, uh, um, uh, but a lot of us knew the city and we were familiar with a lot of the places and we all had a lot of friends there. Sure. And so we would meet up with friends and they would join us. And, and that was always really interesting because we all had so many friends and uh, they worked in government and and uh, they would come over and visit our group and talk with us. So there was a lot of interaction that wasn't even planned for as part of the trip that added to the, the joy of being in Washington, DC. And so I would assume that would be part of this trip because yeah. you would have people there like yourself, Sandy, who have a lot of contacts and maybe they would just come over and visit us for cocktail in the afternoon or something. Exactly. You know? Absolutely. So that's, Absolutely. Why, that's why Washington is so great. And we all have so many contacts there. Yeah. And, you know, from the, to the point of walking, um, during our visit, like these scheduled events, there's really not much working or walking, you know, rather from one visit to transportation back to another visit, unless I kind of one of the highlights that provided if we do this, uh, inaugural beginning of the day tour, but that is really within only kind of one block that we go around. We're not really including any large scale walking that would, you know, be a large sure. uh, distances, you know, anything in the mall, it appears closer than it is. It's like the reverse in the mirror. It's further than it appears, but this is actually, it's so much further than you think you are going and the blocks of city are just relatively big. So if anybody plans on going in advance or staying later, definitely good walking shoes. Sure. Well, Washington's a wonderful city for yeah. contacts and, and it's just, uh, I love it. And I'd really like to go back there again. Look what I And I'd like to go back with the council. <laughs>
Some of you may recognize some faces. Maybe, 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 maybe. There's too much shine. What is it? Yeah. Can't see it. Can't see it all? Can't tell that. It's you and- Oh, it's Barbara. It's a- uh, Yeah. Barbara Bushes. Barbara, like oh, uh, yeah, yeah. All the bushes. Bushes. yeah, and Kay Bailey Hutchinson. Oh, right, and oh. myself, and myself. Okay, oh, good for you. That's oh. great. The three ladies, yeah, great, yeah. great story. Yes, that's Washington D.C. for you. <laughs> but yeah, I would be excited to have join, and uh, it's just, uh, I guess, it always on the pulse of the world. It's just amazing. And then you have the Georgetown and Alexandria and all those uh, towns, of course, that even enrich the experience too. You say the dates are October 30th, is that right? We would like to, we would like to uh, target that we are uh, going out. I'm sure that means you would miss Halloween in Houston. I know it might be very important for some of you. Not so important for me, but you know, how well, often do you get to see, you know? Well, when do you think you'll have the itinerary pretty much solid? Uh, I think as, I mean, the itinerary with things that we want to do in hotels, I would say probably within a couple of weeks when you say me, it just oh, will yes. be the hotels and so forth. Uh, but the schedule of the highlights that I have provided, those honestly are individuals that have said, yes, count me in. They just cannot tell me if they can meet me for lunch on Monday or it's a Wednesday. They said, uh, let's be in touch a little bit closer after summer and see, you know, what the That's schedule okay. looks like. So it's it's not an if, it's rather when, but we will tackle, you know, that part. And certainly uh, we'll have a finalized as in day-to-day, -day, you know, program. So everybody's best prepared. And I know there's sometimes the attire question, you know, blazer and things of that nature that we are, again, give you plenty of time to prepare. The only only comment I would have on the date, Sandy, is, is that's a week before the election and a lot of the congressmen are going to be out and people out campaigning and it's going to be a very uh, difficult city because so many things are going on and maybe might be better a week earlier or something like that. I don't know. That's something you all have to do. Um, a little bit earlier, it's, it's, uh, some of you know, uh, our annual fundraiser is very, very strategic for me and right. as an organization. So. Uh, uh, and that is on October 20th. So we just don't okay, have a so we bandwidth that we need to uh, attend to in farm raising is very important. Right. Alan, we were there during the midterm, actually that week that was midterms. If you recall the same, it was a day when uh, Beto was finding, uh, was uh, against Ted Cruz uh, right. election that was going and going. We were there actually in DC with a tour, uh, watching the news while the results were coming in. And it didn't really seem to affect uh, because That's it was, correct. again, you know, uh, um, our plan is not really to visit that many of the elected officials, honestly. I probably say that probably we're not going to go to the Capitol. Uh, just getting into the Capitol, it's very challenging right now. And it, it also was something that we offered one of the tours. So I feel like we need to do something new uh, and different as well. More uh, on we the are, foreign litigations. Yeah. Uh, and we are also trying to see what the opportunities are in Pentagon. Pentagon is reopening um, post COVID, but they literally are just now reopening uh, to groups for us. So uh, have some of you, who has been to Pentagon? I have. Anybody else? I okay. Have. No. Yeah. That's why we thought it'd be something very uh, interesting to, to see um, and also uh, certainly visit. So. Uh, we'll keep you posted on that. They literally just opened a couple of weeks ago and the website just got updated that it is uh, going to happen. So uh, DC is a little bit slower than us here in coming back, especially post COVID. Um, and that was actually one of the reasons why we had originally penciled in this trip for spring, uh, but a lot of government agencies were not back. A lot of staff were not back. A lot of embassies were not fully operational. And I, I thought it would not be the most impactful visit if, you know, half of DC is not in DC. So uh, uh, therefore we pushed the trip towards the fall. Uh, and it, um, I think attendance wise will be better from the guests that we have rather than earlier in the year. They do have a nice museum in the uh, Pentagon and they have a portion of it which deals with when the airplane struck uh, the Pentagon during 9-11. And that is a very interesting uh, uh, 
thing to see if you haven't seen it before. Um, uh, you know, just a, a particular interesting part of the, the Pentagon display. Absolutely. Yeah. So yeah, like I said, we, we are aware and um, we are checking and Amy is checking also again to see what that looks like of uh, post COVID and post Memorial and post summer to have all of those uh, things. As I said, so many things to do. It's just like, you almost have to decide which ones of the want to do it. It's just, you know, you kind of go do a lot and then you sleep later when you get home is what I'm saying. That's it. <laughs> um, but yeah. Um, I think maybe we can stop recording. It's not. I don't, it's not going to stop the session. It's just going to step stop the recording again. We wanted to capture this so we can uh, incorporate it for our upcoming uh, events. But any big memorial plans for anybody staying in town? 